the unstoppable power of going second to Exodia for you today. Make sure you guys check our friends streetingcarmint.com down below, enter Uncle 40 and uh, save on your purchase. So we have Exodia going second for you, and uh, I figured this was going to be like the best deck to kind of throw at the camera, just to kind of showcase some of like, the little fun aspects that you can do with this, because we're kind of going into a format with Apollosa gone, so Raigeki's just a free, incredibly large board clear. You know, Tenpai Dragon's about to be adapting towards, you know, the smash a board, you know, and just kind of try to win the game out here. So the goal was to try to find a method of madness to be able to try to, you know, eliminate the problem, which is, hey... Um, we need a going second deck in the room that's not named Tenpai, and uh, this gives you an incredibly good shot at doing that. So, you do have to play five bricks in your deck. Uh, it's the cost of being able to OTK your opponent. Uh, not really much to that. We are playing triple copies of the goofy guy that woke up 7,000 years too late. He was hungover. He decided that uh, he took a left at Albuquerque for whatever reason. Uh, this is your key searcher. This gets you into, you know, any of the pieces that you need. Uh, the only downside is, is if you have to start with this, your exodia is only going to be at four because then you're going to have to go get the Millennium Shield here to get things um, because we don't have the Millennium uh, Blue Eyes yet. Once we do get the Millennium Blue Eyes, though, you will be able to send engine into the Blue Eyes to get you into the Ankh to be able to punish your opponent, which is going to be extremely important. Um, I got to tell you, being able to roll out that Blue Eyes and have that, you know, large monster to be able to punish your opponent is going to be incredibly good. And then we play two copies of Mr. Uh, Golem. Golem searches for Wedju, which once again is kind of the heart and soul of the deck. Uh, even though freshly cut down to two on this terrible card. Uh, I can tell you with all of my testing, you want to wedge you. Never play the third. The golem gets you into it. Uh, also, if you do see the wedge you on the normal, since you are playing the terraforming here, uh, you this is the same thing. Like you're, you're playing multiples of this. The wedge you does give you the ability to start dropping down your big guys from the hand. Or, you know, if you need to put an Exodia into the Spell and Trap because you're bricked, then you can go get the Millennium Shield from the deck or the Sengen to be able to do things. Because, remember, the Onk shuffles back from Hand, Field, or uh, Reveal and Deck. So, it actually just kind of does everything that you want it to do. Uh, outside of that, yeah, that's that. Uh, now this deck does get away with playing Triple Shifter. Uh, this was something that is very unfair. The fact that Konami left this card alone is kind of crazy to me. And I think most players are going to agree a lot this format. That Shifter is a free auto win in certain matchups. Exodia does not give two craps about its graveyard in the least. Uh, if an Exodia piece goes to the graveyard, well, you know, we're, we're bona fide boned anyway. Uh, we can get it back, but it, it takes a turn to do so. Having the shifter ensures that, you know, we get the level of interruption that we need, and then the opponent just goes into a massive bad position overall. Uh, now, something... I did cut Ash from the deck. We are playing Triple Spooky Dogwood. This was something that... Uh, I, I do feel is... It kind of has the same maxi feel. Where you'd be trying to Ash your opponent if you Spooky Dogwood your opponent, if they just give you, you know, 20,000 life points and you're at 20,000, you just OTK them with the Exodia. You know, like, the Spooky Dogwood is here to make sure that whatever you do through your turn with the Exodia, they can't really do anything about. And if, you know, they, they freak out because they're like, oh my gosh, you know, like, you know, you have the Spooky Dogwood, my, my turn is over, like, I, I hate it here. Um, if they choose to play into it and put themselves into a, you know, a terrible position, well, congratulations, you know, you did your thing. Exodia is like the only deck that I would consider out here wanting to main deck this in, because I genuinely think that you need to have as many life points as possible to be able to close out the game. Like, it's incredibly broken, um, if you do see it. Still, you gotta draw it. Spells, we have the triple onk. Uh, you are never not playing three of this. You want to play as many of this good card as you can. And remember, you probably resolve this. You're probably winning the game. Unless your opponent's better than you. 
Uh, we do play the one copy of the Seeker Village. Uh, this is going to be your nice little uh, lock on your opponent since Mr. Exodia is a uh, very fantastic spellcaster type monster. So, you know, <laughs> having this sitting up here, having the, the spell trap negate for the Imperm, and having the Seeker Village to lock your opponent out of spell cards is uh, going to feel absolutely stupid. Um, I have seen lists that have considered wanting to test out multiple Seeker Village, to be honest with you. But I think at this point... Having access to the one of is correct. Uh, we are playing Triple Regeki. Please play this. This card is stupid. Um, I can't even make an argument to want to play like Dark Hole. There have been builds out here that have shown up that do play all the Dark Holes, all the Regekis. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, man, like, I don't know how many of these you plan on actually opening up <laughs> to, you know, be able to play the game. But, like, good on you. Like, it's definitely something. Uh, and then, in addition to this, we are playing the two copies of the Lightning Storm. Uh, I do want to consider playing the uh, Harpy Southern Duster in here. That was something else I was definitely wanting. I do play the one copy of the Change of Heart. Uh, to be honest with you, just being able to sack an opponent's monster as a one-of does seem kind of cheesy. You know, you've also got to kind of consider the fact that depending on how your opponent opens up, um, stealing something that they're trying to protect, or, you know, forcing, like, a monster on the field to trigger, uh, to burn it, or, you know, to get a Desiree triggered on this if they have something, uh, standing next to it that's pretty big. And then, of course, one Pot of Prosperity. Thank you, ban list. Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, we are playing one of each of the Exodia cards. I really, really, really want to consider multiple Flames. Uh, flames is actually really stupid for the board wipe. Like, pfft, ugh. If you can get two copies of this up and running uh, on the passives, yeah, good luck to your opponent. We also have Triple Imperm. Pretty standard stuff here. Uh, we do play the one there can only be one. I actually chose to put this in kind of super last minute recently. Or at least keep it in. I think that this card, you don't really care because, you know, all of your friends are all different types. Uh, so it's like, you know, you have Rock Warrior and uh, Beast Warrior. So, like, there can only be one as a free play around. Like, you may as well just play the one Saki uh, one of here and just get away with it. And then we have the one copy of Azurin for the Rabbit. Now, extra deck here. Guess what? This is the easiest thing in the world. So... Now, triple copies of Exodia, the Unstoppable Incarnate. Uh, remember, the Onk is going to shuffle back everything, so your little combo you like to do, if you put the two guys on the field, you make the Rabbit set the Azur rune here, and the Rabbit will get shuffled back into the deck, so you at least end on like the Azur rune uh, if you're going first. Uh, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but like you do what you got to do with the M board. Uh, we are playing one IP. Something went wrong. <laughs> we had to make this. Uh, something went wrong, we had to make this. The rest of this actually really does not matter. Uh, we do have one copy of this. We do play an Asa. Uh, everything is essentially Earth except for Exodia. So being able to have this is like a little stepping stone. I, I really highly doubt your opponent's going to have Earths for you to be able to use. But you know what? It's one more little free thing. Uh, Nightmare Phoenix is actually relevant. We do have relevant back row in the meta right now. So being able to roll this out and disrupt is going to be good. Do have the one unicorn also for disruption. Uh, Celine, this is also, you know, in, in, ca in case we have to climb on up into it uh, with Exodia, you can do so. Access Code Talker, try to clear out games. I found, somehow found four monsters on the field. Uh, we do have Boral Sword. I had to cut Apo, so <laughs> in comes the Boral Sword. Uh, there's, I've never made Apo in my life playing this deck. Uh, we do play a Zeus in here for the change of heart, uh, just in case you steal your opponent's succeed monster. Go ahead and attack with it, and then make a free Zeus for no reason. And we also do play a Typhoon in here to kind of clear up, you know, if your opponent's Wombo comboing, well, congratulations. You can deploy the Doomsday Star and clean up, you know, whatever real problems that they might be kind of throwing at you. So... That is the Unstoppable Exodia. Make sure you guys check our friends at TradingCardMint.com down below and uh, save on your purchase. And honestly, if you're looking for a very fun deck, I think Exodia is going to be the major thing for you to consider out here this format just to have fun. Uh, because who doesn't love having an Unstoppable Boss Monster? Peace out, guys. Patrons! 
Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.